Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Good to see you. We've got the breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman <laughs> in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. They're coming after me. They're trying to pull me back in. Are they really? The terrorist hunting, yes. The DOD. You got to stay strong. You put in your time. You manage 150 people. It's Mimi's time. That's right. That's why I keep telling you. Yeah. Well, but you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll all they be safer if you get she, back there. Maybe go part time. These numbers. Tell her she can't say no. That's yeah. That's true. That is true. We've got the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield in Idaho. Tate, how's the fishing? Good man. Really, really nice. Uh, great weather. It's a good time to escape the heat of Las Vegas. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last but not least. You know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. We got a really interesting topic today that I literally have no idea what people are going to say. So what is our topic today, Scott Todd? Okay. So the question of the day is... Should you, would you, have you put on your offer list or offer letter, I should say, on your offer letter, an invitation for someone to join your buyer's list? I mean, like, hey, don't want to sell, want to buy more? What do you say? Join my buyer's list. It's a really interesting topic and it kind of riffs off of last week's topic about the offer letter. Should it be one page, should it be two page, should you have a counter? And now we're adding one more element. And yeah. I'd love to know what Eric Peterson thinks about this novel idea. Eric, what do you think about building your buyer's list on the offer letter? Um, well, I, I won't say it's a bad idea, um, but I think I probably wouldn't do it myself. Um, I think that in my mind, I don't want to confuse my potential seller. Um, I don't want to send them mixed messages. Like I want the focus of that letter to be buying their land. Um, if they're going to call me and tell me, you know, they don't want to sell their land, but they'd like to buy more, um, you know, then maybe we could have that kind of conversation because that does happen from time to time. But I think in general to put it on the letter, I'm going to be a, a no on that um, just because I don't want to, I don't want to confuse them. Okay. Okay. Um, you know who might be a little bit more irascible about this, a little bit more ornery, maybe taking the other side of it is going to be the Zen master, Mike Zeno. You love building your buyer's list. Here's another opportunity. What do you think? Well, I'm going to go with a hard no. And the reason is, is I don't want to give them a negotiation tool because if they decide to, you know, to wait and get the deal of the week and, you know, maybe they delay. And then next thing you know, they're like, well, you know, geez, I see what you're selling it for. Um, I'd, I'd like to have more for my property. I don't know. I, I think that for that reason alone, although I think it's got some valid potential in generating uh, more potential buyers, but, I'm going to go with a hard no. I don't want to give him something else to go buy for a comp because they probably don't even know what the comps are. They probably held on this property forever. They have no idea when we mail them. That's typically the people we're dealing with. And now it's like, I don't know what it's worth. And I'll, oh, yeah, let me check out this guy's buyers. Like, wow, oh, I, wow, it's worth 10 grand. Um, why are you only offering me 2,500? Um, and so I think it could cause some confusion. Sorry. Okay. Okay, interesting. Mimi Schmidt. Hi. What about you? 
I agree with Mike and Eric completely. I do not want the people that I'm buying from to know what I'm selling that property for. I do not want them to know. Now, I mean, neighbor letters, I'll go back and ask the folks if they want to buy the property next to them, right? So for those people, I'll go back with a neighbor letter, but I don't want the whole group to know what, our, what my, re my retail price is. That, I think that would ruin the market for me and specifically in some of these niche subdivisions I work in. You know what? It's so funny. Like you would say that because I wouldn't even want the neighbors to know. I want to buy their property. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, so, so like when we'll do the, when we'll do the neighbor letter, they'll be like, no, I don't want to buy, but I want to sell. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot. So it's just another lead gen tool. But so are you sticking with that answer then? Would you still go with the neighbor letter or did I convince you to not even do that? I wouldn't put, I will, I reach out to, to buy, for them to, to buy a property from me and be on that seller side, but I'm not going to put them on my buyer's list. Okay. Okay. Well, Tate Litchfield in beautiful Idaho. All right. Well, since I'm coming from witness pr protection over here, because you can only see half my face, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because <laughs> I don't think it's as bad of an idea as Eric and Mimi and Mike, because here's the thing. We send out offers. Our goal is to get a three to 5% response rate, right? And that's three to 5% of the people who are potentially interested in selling us their property. Of that three to 5%, you know, we're looking for a 1% buy rate. That's how we know we're right on the money. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, are we really going to see more than 1% of these people sign up to be on my buyer's list? I don't know. I mean, and what do I care? My, my information's public out there anyways. It's not like I'm hiding anything. So what's to prevent people from taking the name on the offer letter to begin with and Googling, you know, see what Tate's selling this week anyway. They can sign up on our buyers list from the website. So, I mean, is it something I see myself doing immediately? No, but I don't think it's a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, I, I really can't make a, a hard decision without split testing it. I gotta let the numbers tell me if I'm right or wrong on this one. but. I'm leaning towards a more maybe than a hard no. Interesting. Interesting. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Scott's on my team. I already know it. I, I don't well, think so. I already know it. He is, Mark. I know Just, he is. He he's, might, he might he, use your inferior razor, but he's not going to be on your team when it comes nah, to listen, business. Uh, I can I could tell uh, right now, <laughs> though we're a country apart, he's feeling my answer. He's like, oh, Tate, that makes sense. Yeah, I got your back, man. Okay, so my original, my original thought on this was absolutely not. Like that is crazy. Craziness. Because all of the reasons that Mimi and Mike and Eric all said, I agree with them 100%, right? Like it's, it's, it's weird. Like I even think it's weird that like I'm even selective as to who I'm mailing my neighbor letters to. Okay, so like I don't just mail neighbor letters to raw land because I'm going to mail them an offer letter. I don't want to turn around and mail them a neighbor letter saying, Hey, uh, buy, why don't you buy the land that they're going to look at it and go, well, you just offered me 2,500. If you want 10,000 for it. So I only mail it to houses around me, right? That's the way I do it is I mail it to people who have houses around because they didn't get my original offer letter anyway. So I'm like, no, that's ridiculous because to, to put someone on my buyers list because you know what? I want to continue to, um, I want to continue to um, kind of mail to them and say, hey, look, I'll buy your property every 100 days. I'm going to buy, I'm going to offer to buy their property. However, however, the odds are in our favor that they're not going to sell their property, right? Like the, the odds are that they're not going to sell their property. They probably won't buy another property. They may not sell their property, but that said, why not try it? Like, why not? I would put them into a certain, I would give them a, their own landing page so I can tag them. And then if I ever see that it's not working my favor, I just blow them out of there. That's what I would do. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you guys why. What did I say? I'm, what did I say? All right. All right. Easy, easy, big papa. Okay. I'll tell you why you guys, <laughs> I'll, 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 this is what I call pretzel logic. Okay. So I'm definitely team Eric, team Mike and team Mimi. I'll tell you guys why. What are the four elements 
of every strong marketing piece. A strong headline, urgency, scarcity, scarcity, and a clear call to action. Now on our offer, there is a clear call to action. It is very simple. We're gonna buy this property or we're not gonna buy the property. And if, the, and if we're really gonna be making it a little watered down, we might look at your counter offer, but that's it. It is focused, it is clear. We are not fishing for anything else on that particular offer. And that offer is gonna save us time. Because look, you could do blind offers all day long and be on the phone all day long and do the Scott Todd method. Well, maybe I'll just send them to a landing page and they can fill out a form. And now I gotta go through all the, you know, the, the whole thing there. That's not what we do. We are okay. focused. Let me, let, me just, let me just think. Now, if you wanna do it the Scott and Tate way, that is a second letter that has nothing okay. to do with the offer. Now, if you there can you do go. that and build your buyers and buy, build your buyers list that way, I have no qualms, but that's a clear call to action. Are you interested in building your wealth, having a legacy? We have raw land available in the area you live. Go to this website, this beautiful Scott Todd Land Moto landing page and put in your information. I will send you a deal of the week. It is a clear call to action. It's not a, oh, P.S. by the way, we'll buy your land too. Okay, Mark. Week. All right. Week. I agree. I agree with what you're saying and put it in a second letter. And see, that is, that is the, the beauty of this mastermind is that we can craft these things to come up with a solution to anything. All right, Tate, Tate looks a little, a little annoyed with me. Tate? You know, the thing is, I'm not just, I'm not annoyed. I'm just a little hurt. I mean, that was, that was a low blow, Mark. That was like, was this is the blow. only way, this is the only way to do it. And no, 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 no. I, I'm making, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying from a, from a clear fundamental marketing perspective, that is the way to do it and not to muddy right. those waters because we have a hundred years of data on this. I agree with you. I, I, I do agree with you that it, maybe including it in the original offer is not the right way. But I think that, you know, whoever submitted this question, whether it's Scott or somebody else, they could be onto something. There could be another way to build this buyer's list that you know, maybe we've overlooked, maybe we haven't thought of. And that's why I really like the, the origin of the question is, is there another way to build our buyers list with people who've already bought in the area? And I think the answer is, yeah, maybe we could send out letters. Maybe we could try that. I, I, I personally am not going to change my offer letter. Honestly, I'm not going to add this, but I do think that there are other approaches here that could work and it's in our best interest to give them a shot. So I will try it. And for 67 cents, yeah, I mean, if you know your numbers, I, I agree with you. I think that second letter that could go out to say, get on my buyer's list because you already know they own raw land. I agree with you. I know. And that letter, the way we could you know, word that letter is, we already know you own land out in this area. If you want to own more, get in touch, right? And then when they sign up, we could find out, contact me. I bet you we're going to get people from that letter who are going to say, uh, I own this, but I'd like to sell it. Are you interested? So it could work out to be another opportunity to buy. So I don't know. I think I'm going to try it. I mean, what's the average value of somebody who ends up buying property from us? Right. And I think it's a stronger lead because you already know they own property. Right. So I don't know. I, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. I like the landing page idea. I just don't want it on my original offer letter. I don't want to muddy those waters, but I'd love to know what Eric Peterson thinks about building the buyer's list, either if he was swayed by the Scott Tate argument, or if he likes the different argument of, hey, maybe we send him a different letter. Yeah, I have no problem with a separate letter. Um, I still feel like including it on the offer letter just kind of muddies up the message. And uh, I think, you know, ultimately confuses the potential seller, but um, I've got no problem with an additional letter if uh, someone wants to pursue that. Yeah. I mean, I would ask Mike, but he's literally living in complete fear of Scott Todd in, in so many different ways because 
you know, is his phone going to start ringing? Is it going to look like it's different people? And, you know, so there's probably just whatever he says, we got to take it with kind of like a grain of salt because he's probably not going to, you know, be like, oh, I don't, this, I dis, I don't, <laughs> you probably won't ever hear him say, I disagree with Scott Todd. So, but that being said, just so we, everybody's clear on that, we would like your opinion, Mike. Well, yes, there's a lot of truth in what you said, but I will say that there was a wonderful thing that Tate brought up about the percentages. Look at, we, there's like 90, 95% of the people that know and probably like the area as opposed to the three to five that are going to respond and the one that we're going to buy from. So, I mean, we're already reaching out. These are potential buyers. So I don't like it on in the initial offer letter, but if there's something we could do since we already have that, I think that's pretty cool. Okay. And let's just give Mimi the last word on this. Mimi. Uh, my opinion hasn't changed. I wouldn't put them on my buyer's list and I wouldn't let them know what I'm selling my property for. So you wouldn't even, so you wouldn't send a second letter even just to build your buyer's list? No, not to those particular areas, no. Because you, you want to keep it clean. You want to just buy property there. Okay. I'm following the recipe. I'm keeping it simple. Oh, ooh. 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 Checkmate. He just burned us all. Follow the recipe. Well, I think, Mark, don't you, you used to come out and say, you know, follow the recipe, but let me come up with these crazy ideas because, you know, you can afford to waste some money. So I think that's the way we should let this go is let's let Mark waste some money. Let's let Mark contaminate his buyer's list. Um, and then you can share your results with us. Okay. You know what? I, I like that experiment. I would do it for the community 100%. So let's do it. We'll, we'll get, we'll get people on it and we'll come back and, and Mimi's probably going to laugh at us. But maybe not. Maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be like, hey, we got a sale from this and we can laugh at, you know, all the way to the bank based on our experiment. So we'll see. But, you're, but Tate, you're right though. Like the only way to know is if you test it. That's the only definitive way to know. So as much as I ripped on your original answer, there were parts of it I did agree with. I knew it. I knew all right. it. So, you know, we're, you know, we're still good. <laughs> All right. Well, before we go to our tip of the week from Mimi Schmidt, I just wanted to let everybody know about this week's sponsor of the podcast. None other than, I know you guys aren't going to believe it, Flight School. Learn how in 16 weeks can literally transform your life. A one-time sale, get recurring passive income every single month. No renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. Build real wealth without having to put a lot of capital in from your own pocket, but do it in real time with the master, the Yoda of land investing, Scott Todd, taking you up that mountain safely, quickly, efficiently. Learn more, get on a call with the Zen Master Mike Zeno with the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, Mimi Schmidt, what? is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve your lives. What do you got? It's something else out of the HubSpot sales blog. It's a training template. I get a lot of questions about how to train a sales VA. And I think it's the hardest VA to really train. So this, it's way more detailed than any of us would ever use, but it gives you some things to think about, right? When you're training your sales VA, what software do they need to get set up in? What email accounts or Slack channels, right? What other uh, tools technically do you use, right? People that they should meet or talk to, how to set goals for them. Um, suggested reading, right? Um, so it's just something to help people get their thoughts together for their sales VA training. I love it. I love it. That's really good. I'm downloading it right now. Very cool. Well, I'm not downloading it right now because it's asking me all these questions, but eventually I will. Eventually I will. Um, Eric, what do you think of that tip of the week? It's great. I mean, we all need sales training uh, for ourselves or for our sales assistants. So um, any resources to help with that? Um, 
highly recommend it. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, I think today's podcast was very lively. It was a great topic. I think we, we worked some things out together in a, in a mastermind type of setting. So good on us. I want to thank the listeners and hopefully you're getting value as well. And if you are, there's three little things you can do. You, all you have to do is subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. And um, before we end with a big group hug, um, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. Okay, not bad. Um, (laughs) So speaking of hugs, um, I think we're all sort of missing them, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I saw some friends the other day. I gave them like the bow, like, you know, elbow, stay six feet away. You know, it's... It's kind of missing. Mike, you're a big hugger. Yeah, I'm missing it. Haven't haven't hugged my parents since this all started. I haven't been able to see my grandmother and you know, she's ninety nine this year. So I want to go see her soon. And yeah, I'm missing the hugs. By the way, speaking of hugs, did you get any birthday hugs? Happy birthday. Well, from from the kids and whatnot. Yes, I did. And uh, we had a wonderful day. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. What'd you guys do? Uh, we went down to Salem, Mass, which is sort of uh, like on the ocean and we had a nice meal outside and uh, it's just really good. And then we walked around and uh, got some coffee, looked at some uh, little shops and just had a great day. That's we started awesome. out the day with uh, yoga and a nice long five mile walk too. So nice. wow. full day. Yeah. Well, the, the, I got a gift today that was sort of a surprise. It was David Schmidt's Father's Day gift, and the yeah, gift that we, he we gave. We can't. Your your microphone We're running is running out of time. We don't hear you. Yeah. Sorry, we don't we don't know what you're saying. We really nobody can hear you. Crazy, nobody. S- Nothing. I, Mike, can you hear him? Hey, no, can you nothing. guys hear Mike? Nothing. We can't hear a word. Scott, just Cannot close us hear. out, then. See, close like, us out. This, this is how you silence the mind. The, this is how you silence Mark, right? Like you just silence, just talk over him. He can't, like, don't worry. We can, we can take his phone out. We can take his mic, his mic out too. You know, I, I feel like you guys would really thrive in, let's say the Chinese government, <laughs> right? I mean, last I, I checked, there was freedom of speech in this country, fellas. <laughs> Was there something to and, say? What did we miss? I'm, I'm going to exercise it because David Schmidt shaved with the Merker razor, your guys' razor. And I believe the word was decent. Is that right, Mimi? He had to use it a lot to go over it because it didn't get close enough. Mimi, you're not helping. You're not I'm helping not, us, Mimi. But he loved how easy it was to clean. He loved the heft. I think I asked him if he was holding it at the right angle. See, so oh, if like, he doesn't hold them, oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, listen, when he gets your razor mark, he's gonna be like, <laughs> this about. thing just moves the shaving cream around. This is the biggest waste of money so ever. So I cannot be wait. Be a- I, I will be sending him the tutorial videos. You just do it at a little thirty degree angle. Let the blade do the work. You know, this guy is a freaking pilot. Okay, he flies jets. I think he can. I think he knows how to use a, a straight edge razor. Okay, he's a boxer account. Send him the videos. We'll get him the razor. We'll do a part two. Yeah, it's all good. Continued. All good. Continued. Yeah, you know, at least he's not using an a uh, an electric like some other people we know. <laughs> Could I change the subject? Is that okay? I got. I wanted to point something out that sure. I feel bad, Tate, that you have bad lighting today because it's probably the best haircut I've seen in a long time. I really, I'm thinking that's pretty sharp and you can't see it because of the lighting, but that has got a nice part on it. And I think it's wonderful. I think we got to point it out because the listeners can't see it because of the bad lighting, but I can see it. Thank you. Yeah. My, my wife's getting really good at this whole haircut thing. It looks great. Yeah. It looks really good. Yeah. Unlike my mop, I got to get a cut. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 
I got a video from uh, Racine, the deal machine guy who, who um, this is her industry. And it was like a 33 minute YouTube video on, on how to do like a home, a good home haircut. Wow. So next time you guys see me, maybe I won't look as jacked up as I do now. She'll be pretty good. So, well, this was fun. And uh, again, Mimi, thank you for that wonderful gift. Mike, glad you had a great birthday. And this was a, a phenomenal time. It's always great getting together. And uh, Tate, enjoy Idaho. Catch some, some fish. Enjoy getting out of the heat. And uh, see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody.